Hello everyone. If you remember in the last lecture, we started discussing about the uh, properties related to asphalt mixtures. Uh, in the last lecture, we have discussed about various performance characteristics that are linked to uh, the uh, response of the asphalt mixture and that are um, desirable uh, from uh, the asphalt mixture. And then we discussed uh, also about the uh, development of mix design process from the uh, historical perspective. So, today we are going to discuss about the volumetrics of uh, bituminous mixtures or asphalt mixtures from the perspective of mix design and this is uh, the backbone of any mix design process. So, irrespective of whichever mix design process uh, we are adopting for finding out the aggregate gradation and the optimum binder content, uh, these um, concepts will always remain the same and will form the backbone of the mix design process. So, talking about the mix design process, the steps of which we will be discussing later when we uh, will discuss about individual mix design such as Marshall mix design and super paved mix design. The process uh, is outlined in, in this uh, simple flow diagram which you are seeing on the screen. So, uh, in any mix design process, it starts with material testing and confirmation. So, you we have to check whether the binder which we are going to use is appropriate uh, for the design and also the aggregate and the aggregate properties, physical properties of aggregates and the aggregate gradation is within the desired range as specified by the highway agencies. Once we confirm these materials, then of course, we have to mix the bitumen and the aggregate particles at elevated temperature and there is a specific uh, condition for mixing and compaction which should be achieved uh, in the plant, uh, in the laboratory and also in the plant and the field. So, we will discuss about that step today that uh, why this mixing and compaction, the step of mixing and compaction temperature is so important. Of course, uh, once they are mixed, we will have our bituminous mixture uh, at using any, any compaction process uh, about which we have discussed. For example, it can be uh, an impact compaction, it can be a gyratory compaction or it can be a kneading compaction. So, uh, we adopt some compaction process and finally, we will have um, our bituminous mixture which you are seeing uh, here in the screen uh, and uh, I mean something in this form. Uh, it can be of different dia and uh, height depending on the compaction process we are adopting and also depending on the gradation which we will discuss uh, later. And then comes the analysis of the volumetrics of the asphalt mixtures, uh, which will be our focus uh, today. Uh, and we will discuss about different volumetric, uh, critical volumetric parameters, which are uh, directly related uh, to, the, to the performance of the bituminous mixture. Once the volumetrics uh, have been analyzed, then we do some typical uh, testing in the laboratory. It can be a different forms of mechanical testing on the compacted bituminous mixtures. And finally, the volumetric data and the results of this uh, mechanical tests, they are analyzed to complete the mix design process. So, again the steps we will be discussing later when we will talk about the individual mix design process. Uh, well, talking about the volumetrics, uh, which will be our um, prime discussion today. Uh, we have to note down few important points. You see, we have already discussed that for aggregates and I also told you that uh, aggregate, the specific gravity of aggregates um, is one such parameter which is directly used in the mix design. So, this can be measured in the lab. We are measuring it using some process. For example, weight in air, saturated surface dry weight and weight in water. So, GSB is one parameter which can be measured in the lab. Then what else we can measure? We can measure the theoretical maximum specific gravity of the mix. Now, this concept we have not discussed till now and we will start discussing or we will talk about this particular specific gravity today. Uh, just to uh, you know note here that it says theoretical maximum specific gravity of mix. So, you have to remember that this specific gravity is not related to the specific gravity of the aggregates. This is related to the combination of bitumen and aggregate and we will talk about that particular specific gravity. 
The next measured parameter is the bulk specific gravity again of the mix which we have not discussed we will discuss today before we jump into the volumetrics and this is denoted as GMB. Here again you know we have to keep uh, remembering these notations so that it becomes simple for us to understand the process of the mix design, the process of the volumetric calculation. Uh, for example, G suffix X SB uh, denotes the bulk specific gravity of the aggregates. G suffix MM it denotes the theoretical maximum specific gravity of the mix all right and bulk specific grav and G suffix MB it denotes the bulk specific gravity of the mixture. So, this GMB is also a mixed property not an not only an um, aggregate property. So, this is again one important point which we have to note because confusion arises uh, when we talk about multiple types of specific gravity specifically in the asphalt mix design process. There is one more specific gravity which we will be talking. So, there will be so many uh, different terminologies related to specific gravity which sometimes can be confusing for any student or for uh, you know any practitioner who is doing the volumetric calculation. So, uh, let us get comfortable with this notation and then let us try to also differentiate that which specific gravity relates to the aggregate and which specific gravity relates to the properties of the mix. So, now uh, I have told you about two specific gravities which is related to the mixture property that is theoretical maximum specific gravity G suffix mm and bulk specific gravity G suffix mb. Now, these parameters can be measured in the laboratory. So, we have control on it. If we have the material, we can do a set of, we can do some form of testing and then we can get or calculate this parameter. Then there are parameters which cannot be measured in the laboratory and these inputs these inputs means the specific gravity which we have measured in the laboratory and the weights of the individual material which we have uh, with us can be used in combination to derive other parameters such as air voids. So, we will discuss about these volumetric parameter. So, how much what is the volume of voids in the bituminous mixture? So, this we cannot measure in the laboratory. You have to remember that volume is something which is not directly measurable in the laboratory. We always indirectly measure it or calculate it you can say. So, uh, air void the calculation of air void will also is also dependent on these measured properties uh, which we have discussed. The other uh, critical parameter it is voids in mineral aggregates again this is a new terminology which we will uh, which we will define and then we will try to understand. So, voids in mineral aggregate. So, this is also a form of volume. So, this again will depend on these measured parameters. The next critical parameter is VFB which is voids filled with bitumen alright. So, this will also we will also calculate using the measured parameters. Now, one most important I feel is the parameter that is GSE. In fact, I will tell you at the end of our discussion that GSE is one such uh, uh, parameter which because of which we, we do so many calculations in the mix design process. The reason being uh, GSE cannot be measured in the laboratory unlike, unlike GSB and GSA. Uh, so, what is uh, GSB again? This is the bulk specific gravity of the aggregates and GSA is the apparent specific gravity of the aggregates. If you remember we have discussed that there are three types of specific gravity of aggregates which we are interested in. One is GSB, GSA and the third one is GSE which depends on the bitumen absorption and since we cannot measure the bitumen absorption, we cannot measure GSE or calculate GSE from laboratory measurements. We calculate it indirectly using some form of calculative approach. So, we will discuss about that. So, again effective specific gravity of aggregates. Now, you see this is the aggregate property G s G suffix s e. So, this also we will calculate and finally, we will we are interested to calculate the percentage of absorbed bitumen because percentage of absorbed bitumen cannot be measured using any laboratory test procedure. So, before we discuss about these volumetric properties, let us discuss about the first step here which is the uh, 
mixing and compaction uh, process. So, as I told mixing and compaction process is also a very critical process and we have to be very careful in the laboratory and also in the mixing plant uh, that at what temperature our materials are exposed to. Let us first talk about laboratory. So, mixing and compaction. So, what are these temperature? Mixing temperature is the temperature at which the bitumen and the graded mineral aggregates are mixed in the plant alright inside the pug mill. So, aggregates are dried, it is sent uh, through elevated um, um, uh, through uh, hot elevators and then uh, finally, it comes in contact with filler and bitumen and they are mixed together. So, this process at what temperature this mixing will take, take place that is the mixing temperature alright. And here again the target is that I should obtain a uniform coating of the bitumen over the aggregate particles. And what is compaction? This is something which is happening in the field that I am transporting the loose bituminous mixture through trucks to the field and in the field using pavers and using rollers I am finally compacting the mix. So, compaction temperature is that temperature at which the roller basically compacts the bituminous mixture or that range of temperature you can say. So, uh, and, and this is what is happening in the field and then in the laboratory also we have to prepare bituminous mixture to do the uh, uh, mix design calculations. So, in the laboratory how do I determine at which temperature the bitumen should be mixed uh, with the aggregate. Now, this, this concept for specially for unmodified bitumen is called as the equiviscous method and here our assumption is that the viscosity of the bitumen is related to the workability characteristic of the bituminous mixture. So, there is certain range of viscosity at which I can obtain appropriate coating of the uh, bitumen over the aggregates and again there is another range of temperature at which I can obtain appropriate compaction for the bituminous mixture and this already we have discussed in module 3 when we are talking about uh, properties of bitumen. So, uh, in the equiviscous method as we have discussed previously that we will do the rotational viscometer testing at uh, two temperatures uh, typically let us say 135 and 165 degree Celsius and we will plot the variation of uh, viscosity with temperature in a semi logarithmic graph where the y axis is in the logarithmic scale and x axis is in the arithmetic scale and the mixing uh, range will be determined corresponding to the viscosity of 0 0.17 plus minus 0 0.02 Pascal seconds and the compaction temperature will be 0 0.28 uh, plus minus 0 0.03 Pascal seconds. Therefore, we will mark this range which you are seeing here and corresponding to that we can determine the range of that temperature all right for mixing as well as for compaction. So, this method is uh, usually used for when we are dealing with unmodified binders, but as also we have discussed previously that modified binders even at higher temperature can show non-Newtonian behavior and therefore, this equiviscous method might not give the correct value of the, the corresponding workability characteristics, corresponding value which will replicate the or which will um, uh, identify the workability characteristics. So, for modified binders in fact, a lot of studies have been done um, few of the rec a few of the guidelines they say that manufacturer recommendation should be taken to determine the appropriate range of mixing and compaction temperature. And then um, uh, asphalt institute MS 2 uh, from where I have taken most of the discussion related to mix design uh, has identified two additional methods. One is the DSR phase angle method and the other is the uh, DSR uh, steady shear flow procedure. As the name indicates mixing and compaction temperature using these procedure can be evaluated using a dynamic shearometer. So, what happens uh, in a phase uh, angle method that we will carry out frequency sweep test on the binder uh, at 0 0.1 to 100 radians per second and typically we will do this at three temperatures. So, we will do the frequency sweep test at uh, minimum three temperatures. And then what we will do because we have three temperatures, we will plot a master curve 
at 80 degree Celsius. So, we will plot a phase angle master curve and we have already discussed about the concept of master curve. So, we will plot, plot a phase angle master curve at 80 degree Celsius and then let us say if um, this is the frequency and this is the phase angle, if this is the master curve which we have obtained. So, what we will do at, so this is at T reference of 80 degree Celsius, all right. And then uh, using this master curve, we will identify the frequency corresponding to the phase angle of 86 degrees. So, corresponding to the phase angle of 86 degree, I will identify this frequency omega, all right. And using this uh, frequency, I will use these formulas to calculate the mixing and compaction temperature and these are empirical formulas. So, this mixing temperature, this formula will give me the temperature in uh, degree Fahrenheit. So, we can convert it to degree Celsius very easily. Uh, so, uh, here omega is that frequency corresponding to the phase angle of 86 degrees. Another method which has been identified by Asphalt Institute is the um, uh, DSR uh, steady shear flow uh, procedure. In this what we do? We do a, a, a shear stress sweep test. So, we will do a shear stress sweep test. Um, at a range of typically like uh, 50 to 1000 Pascals and then we will see the variation of the viscosity. So, it is expected that at very after a particular uh, shear stress the viscosity will become constant. So, um, usually the viscosity is taken as at, at uh, 1000 Pascals all right. So, at 1000 Pascal we will take the, so this is the steady state uh, viscosity all right. So, we, again this test is also done at three different temperatures and uh, at three at three different temperatures we will note the steady state viscosity and then what we will do we will plot the variation of temperature versus steady state viscosity so this is steady state viscosity let us say ssv all right and we will have at this at three temperatures so we will just see the variation and using this variation we will we can find out the mixing temperature corresponding to the steady uh, state viscosity range of 0 0.17 plus minus 0 0.02 pascal second you see this is same as the equiviscous method but the range of compaction temperature is a little different it is 0 0.35 plus minus 0 0.03 pascal seconds so corresponding to this range using the same process which we have seen here we can determine the range of mixing and compaction temperature. Here I would just like to mention that various researchers in the past have atten attempted to propose other procedures also, but these two uh, additional procedures have been suggested by Asphalt Institute. So, uh, this is what we will do in the laboratory. Now, let us see what we have to do in the field that is in the plant and during the compaction process. So, here we have to understand that the laboratory mixing and compaction temperatures, they are not intended to represent the field mixing and compaction temperatures. So, in the plant, how we determine the mixing temperature that at this temperature, the aggregate can be sufficiently dried, so that we can remove all the moisture from the aggregates and then it can be uh, uniformly coated with the uh, aggregates and this temperature should not exceed 177 degree Celsius as suggested by Asphalt Institute. Also, the idea for compaction temperature is to achieve the target field density and this, this range can be between 135 to 155 degree Celsius. If we look at the guidelines given by Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, uh, we will you will see that this is the table which has been suggested for the mixing and compaction temperature and they have also suggested individual temperature for binder and the aggregates. So, you can see that um, uh, that here uh, depending on the type of bitumen because of course, the workability characteristic is a function of the uh, viscosity of bitumen, uh, different uh, bitumen temperature has been proposed, different aggregate temperature has been proposed, uh, different uh, mix the mixture temperature has been proposed and then we have some minimum laying temperature and minimum rolling temperature. So, laying temperature is that temperature uh, at which we are basically spreading the mix and laying the mix in the uh, field and then at rolling temperature we are finally using the rollers to compact the bituminous mixture at the uh, desired density.
all right. So, uh, these minimum temperatures has been suggested by MORTH. Since the mixing and compaction temperature now we know, so now at this temperature we have to mix the aggregate particles with the bitumen and we have to prepare the mixture. So, here we in the laboratory uh, usually we select 3 to 5 trial binder contents because one of the objective of mix design is to find the appropriate binder content. So, in order to find that binder content, I should have the variation of different volumetric parameters, different properties with respect to different binder content. So, I will have to select 3 to 5 binder content at which I will prepare the mixture. So, usually based on experience, the designer can select this range and usually this should be selected at a gap of around 0 0.5 percent. Then what we have to do? Once we decided what is the range, let us say that the range is between somewhere between 3.5 to um, uh, 5.5 or let us say 6 percent. So, this is the range at which we will be preparing and we have decided let us say to prepare at 3.5, 4, 4.5. So, this is 0.5 percent gap which we have decided to prepare for example, all right. Then uh, what we will do? Um, we will place the aggregate, the measured aggregate for um, for either one mix or a batch of mix uh, and the measured binder in the oven at the mixing temperature for at least 2 hours before mixing. So, we should not you know excessively uh, heat the aggregate in the binder to cause especially the binder to cause excessive aging. We should heat it to that particular uh, period that uniform temperature can be arrived. Then what we have to remember? that the bitumen which we are using uh, in the laboratory should ideally be stored in small containers rather than big containers. Because we have to prepare multiple mixtures and it is possible that we will heat the bitumen, there will be reheating of bitumen at uh, multiple times. So, uh, in order to uh, in order not to cause excessive aging, it is important that bitumen is stored in small containers, uh, maybe in multiple small containers. Okay, so, now when the aggregate and bitumen are sufficiently heated, we will take the measured quantity of aggregate uh, and the measured quantity of bitumen and we will mix them either using a automatic mixer or we can also do manual mixing in the laboratory. Um, and it is suggested that for single batch, uh, if we are using an automatic mixer, the typical mixing time is around 1 minute that is 60 seconds and if we are using multiple batches at one go it can be up to 2 minutes. So, in, in this period the binder will sufficiently coat the aggregate and remember this mixing time is in laboratory not in the plant. In the plant the mixes are typically around 10 to 15 seconds only. So, this uh, process is only in the laboratory. Then once the loose mixture is ready, then we will condition the mixture. Now, this is an important step uh, which I will discuss. So, we have to condition the mixture for at least 2 hours at the compaction temperature. So, before compaction, we have to allow the bitumen and the aggregate to stay together for some time. And why this is important? Because we have already discussed that the aggregates have uh, pores. So, bitumen will get absorbed within this pores to a, to a particular depth, all right. So, this process takes time which means bitumen has to sufficiently stay with the aggregates and then only the appropriate absorption will take place. Now, remember in the plant also bitumen and aggregates they are getting sufficient time before compaction because it is either stored in the uh, silos or it is uh, when it is dumped in the trucks it, it during the transportation there is a sufficient period for appropriate absorption to take place. But in the laboratory many a times we have a tendency because the Marshall mix design which we adopt in India, it does not specify uh, this conditioning period. So, we have a tendency that immediately after mixing we go for compaction which may not be correct. Uh, and why this is critical? The question is why this is critical? This is critical from the perspective of bitumen absorption because if we do not give sufficient time for the bitumen to stay with the heated aggregates, the complete absorption will not take place. If the complete absorption does not take place, then the volumetric calculation, especially the percentage absorbed bitumen, which is again related to effective specific gravity of aggregate, which is again related to theoretical maximum specific gravity of the mix, everything will change. So, therefore, it is very, very important that 
complete bitumen absorption should take place before we do the volumetric uh, calculations or volumetric measurements. So, asphalt institute suggest that if the absorption of the aggregates with which we are making the mix is less than 2 percent, then at least 2 hours of conditioning should be uh, is required before compaction. And if the absorption of the aggregate is more than 2 percent, we can go up to 4 hour of conditioning. So, this is this is explained using this chart which you can see on the screen. As I said the GMM which is dependent on the effective binder content or the absorbed bitumen, it changes depending on the mixture aging time which means the conditioning period. So, you see if the absorption is uh, 1 percent, then for some period the GMM will increase, but after some time it becomes constant. So, we have to understand that what is that time beyond which it should be constant. So, we should not uh, try to compact here or here, otherwise this does not indicate complete absorption of the uh, mix. All right. Similarly, if the absorption is more than 2 percent, you can see that before a steady state is reached or a constant value of GMM can be arrived, we need sufficient time uh, you know uh, for, for this to happen. So, depending on the absorption of the aggregate, the conditioning period will also change and this is a very, very important step which we have to remember. <clears throat> Once we uh, have given sufficient time uh, for the bitumen and the aggregate. Uh, before compaction, so that complete absorption take place, then we have to finally compact the mixture, the loose mixture. So, this compaction can be done using any compaction method depending on the mix design we are following. It can be an impact compaction, if it is a Marshall mix design process, it can be a gyratory compaction, if it is a uh, super pave uh, mix design process or it can be a kneading compaction, if it is a heavy mix design process. As I said that there are few measured parameters and then there are calculated parameters. So, before we look into the uh, calculated parameters and the volumetric uh, as, uh, parameters, let us understand what additional measurement we have to do with the bituminous mixture. So, uh, you see we have already tested the bitumen in the laboratory, we have confirmed bitumen, we have already tested all the physical properties of the aggregates in the laboratory. Now, we have prepared the mix and in this mix, we have to do two additional measurements in the laboratory related to the physical and volumetric properties of the mixture. So, these two measurement, one measurement will be done on loose mixture and the other measurement will be done on compacted mixture. So, in the loose mixture which will be something in this form, <coughs> you we determine the theoretical maximum specific gravity of the mix. So, now we are introducing or trying to understand a new parameter a new type of specific gravity which is actually the specific gravity of the mixture and not for the aggregates. So, this is the specific gravity of this loose mixture which we are. So, what is the definition of GMM? Of course, it is weight per volume, but what is that volume? This is the volume of the voidless mix and this is the weight of the mix. So, weight of the total material divided by the volume of the voidless mix which means I am not looking at or considering those voids which are between the individual particles, all right, between the individual particles. So, do not get confused here with the voids of in the aggregate surface because that is now completely covered with bitumen and whatever bitumen absorption has to take place that has already taken place and we will see how to determine the bitumen absorption. But now, this voids which we are talking about is the voids between these uh, individual uh, bitumen coated particles. So, we are not taking that void into consideration which means this is the weight of aggregate plus weight of binder divided by the volume of aggregate plus volume of binder. In the subsequent slides we will see the procedure to determine this particular specific gravity. And then we have compacted mixture with us and of course, uh, I, I think you can imagine very easily that in the compacted mixture what will be the volume comprise of? This volume will be the volume of the bitumen, volume of the aggregate and there will be some inter particle voids uh, which is very clear here. You see these are the inter particle voids between these coated uh, particles. So, here the bulk specific gravity of the mix which is denoted as GMB is defined as the weight of the mix divided by the volume of the total compacted mixture which means we are also 
including the interparticle voids in the calculation. So, V A plus V B plus the interparticle voids. Here I think uh, you can understand that uh, I mean if, if you try to compare both the specific gravity just try to imagine that if we have a compaction process theoretically which can reduce the air void of the mixture to 0 percent which means if I am able to compact the mixture such that there is no air void in the mixture then GMB and GMM will be same. Ideally GMB will be lower than GMM in practical condition because we cannot compact the mixture ideally to 0 percent air voids. And again just to again reiterate that GMB and GMM are mixture specific gravities and not the specific gravity of aggregates. So, let us stop here now and then uh, in the next presentation we will continue discussing about the volumetrics um, and uh, we will first discuss about the laboratory procedure to measure uh, the theoretical maximum specific gravity and the bulk specific gravity and then further uh, we will look at the uh, we will try to understand uh, the calculated parameters and look at the derivations for the calculated parameters. We will continue this topic in the next presentation. Thank you.